Alright. <clears throat> I'm awake. I'm awake. I, I have no idea what I'm doing as well, but that's I think that's established. Alright. Everybody, welcome to um, what will hopefully become regular game development stream, and not just a once-off uh, shoulder Drake has no idea what he's doing stream. We'll see how this goes. Um, partly due to being busy. Uh, for a variety of reasons, and partly due to this whole Unity debacle. Uh, I'm coming into this stream quite unprepared. Um, because I had originally thought that I would be using Unity for... Uh, also, furthermore, I had originally thought that I would have more time to prepare. Um, but because neither of those things eventuated, ultimately this is going to be the... Um, how does Godot even work, and how do I bind controller uh, inputs to things stream? Um, regrettably, I think this might send, uh, set the theme uh, for this adventure uh, a bit, in the sense that um, it's just going to... Uh, a, lot of, a lot of this series, especially early on, uh, is just going to be me trawling documentation uh, and looking for solutions to weirdly specific pro uh, problems. Uh, if that's your jam, then I hope you get something out of this. Uh, and if that's not your jam, then... Uh, stick around for my stellar company? I don't know. Look, we'll, we'll see how this goes. I will likely persevere with this for at least a few streams. Uh, because... I am... We are whispering? Are we whispering? Um, am I quiet? Am I quiet? I mean, if I'm quiet or, like, you can't make me out, uh, please do boot me. Because, uh, I am behind two doors and thus should be talk most. Also, Laris is currently awake. Uh, but also I don't want to get into the habit and start yelling at, at code elements and then suddenly Laris was asleep and now she's awake again and also my head is missing. So, we'll, we'll, we'll sort it out as we go. Uh, what are we doing? We're looking at that, we're looking at that. Okay, what do I need? I need a new seat. Really? Oh, this is what that does. Okay, I was wondering what this... Uh, man. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Um, that is essentially what is happening. Chipat, have you always been a VIP? Um, no. Um, you have only been a VIP since after I started streaming and probably also a while, but it has at least been months. It has definitely been at least like two, uh, a month or two. Actually, I have no clue when I made you a VIP. I can try to find out. I mean, the last modified last year. Um, sir, so you've been VIP for at least nine months. <laughs> Tell me a date. Um, you've been VIP since May last year. <laughs> Today we learned. Oops. Okay. Uh, May, yeah, since like 18th of May 2022. Real, the VIP is real. What? what? Oh, the cap. That is wrong. I want to pick. Put it here. All right, I'm kind of building a, a new scene dynamically because I, uh, as I mentioned, that I came into this completely unprepared. But I probably came into this a little bit more completely unprepared than I should have. Um, yeah, it's because I went on hiatus for a year because I went, moved countries like a nutcase. Uh, but there you go. Um, thank you for popping in, by the way. Um, this will either be very interesting or very boring. 
uh, most likely it will be very boring for long stretches of time with occasional bursts of a very interesting as I succeed in getting things working. Uh, at least that's what I'm hoping. Alright, um, I need... Amdalots, chat overlay. Why is chat background a separate thing? That's silly. No, that's come. Oh no. Okay, so let's do let's do sound alerts, follow alert, and put. Um, that should be. Um, the perfect comfort stream. Yay! Um. I should put some sort of music on in the background. Um, I don't really have that worked out for this time around, but possibly for next time I will figure something out. It'll mostly be me, me typing and whinging. Uh, okay. We have mic input, which is important. I do have my underground theme, but that's not playing at the moment. Um, I mean, it is playing at the moment, but it's it won't be playing in. Uh, what I'll do is I'll copy it. Um. Occasionally, switch out the track. Paste. Uh, er, I want to paste you. That's literally how that works. There, I wanna, I wanna... Wait, did you... Uh, okay. Um... Media... Boss... Uh... Game... Ordinius... Game... Gooder... I'll browse... Oh, I'll loop that. Oh, I can't loop that, I've got a middle window in the way. Welcome to me... Um... Debugging... Uh... Stuff. Um, playing in a team-based accuracy tourney and your team has made it to win a semi-final so far. That's bonkers. So, oh, so it's a double elimination? That's awesome. Congrats. That's really, really cool. Um, desktop. SVN. Music. Project audio files. MP3. There's gotta be something here I can use, right? No, that's too bouncy. That's too intense. That's incomplete. That's a huge mess. How about... What are all of these? What a mess. Very little of my music is well suited for like, looping. Um, I guess this is what I was looking for, so I can just start with that. Um, let's do this. Oh my god, that's so loud. Um, stop, stop, stop. Okay, hopefully that's less loud. Let's make it like really banana. Bonkers. Okay, okay, we should have a mostly blank screen and we should have some music. There and chuck it. Yeah. Going. Here. Under capture. I don't know if you can even read that. Okay. Uh, let's try that. 
that looks promising. Um, okay, so I've done a little bit of messing around with this already. And all I know is that structurally, Godot is composed of a hierarchy of scenes, which are themselves composed of hierarchies of nodes. Uh, so I've tried to slap together something that will behave like a spaceship with six degrees of freedom. So you get um, three degrees of translation and also three degrees of rotation. Uh, that being specifically thrust, heave, and sway for forward and backward, up and down, and left and right translation, and roll, pitch, and yaw for... Uh, I don't even know how to quantify that. It's roll left and uh, roll right, and it's also your left and your right. Your right, but they're um, you roll around the thrust axis, you yaw around the heave axis, and you pitch around the sway axis. So, uh, don't know what else to tell you. For anyone just joining us, I know basically nothing about Godot. I started learning Godot yesterday. Hey, Dustin, thanks for hopping in. One is three man teams, two players from each team play a song, and everyone has to um, play a certain amount of times depending on if it's best of three, five, or seven. We placed second in qualification, so we can seed into round two instead of round one. I clutched the tiebreaker for our first match, nice, and then our technical act player hard carried for our second match along with our one under player supporting both of us. Nice, sounds like you build a good team. Um, so, yes, um, please don't expect amazing things. This is a uh, Pretty much like my very, very first experience with Godot. Um, there will be a lot of asides and a lot of... Oh, excuse me, I need to check the documentation because I have no idea what's going on. And also a lot of... Um, I need to update this diagram that I have conveniently located off to the side to get my head around any of this at all. Um, so, uh, the idea... Oh, shit. Um... Have we crashed and burned before we've con before we started? So, um, the structure of the game. Why is this the main scene? What the hell am I thinking? Remote camera ship projection menu. Okay, the main scene should contain combat. No, 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 no. no. How do I add existing? Oh, I can drag them from here. Um, the main scene should contain the combat scene and the menu scene. And ideally, this is the top level uh, structure for this game. Uh, how much is it going to be streamed tomorrow? I was wondering if you'd like to watch them. I would absolutely love to. Um, please, uh, if you can ping me with the time specifically, and also you're welcome to post them in community streams in my server, I would absolutely love to uh, have a look at proper competent beat saber playing. Playing. Proper competent beat saber gameplay, unlike my re relatively incompetent English. Ugh. My background music seems loud. But like graphically speaking, okay, there we go. How goes the diff so far? Um, well, yesterday I switched engines from one engine I don't understand to the other engine I don't stand don't understand. <laughs> so, oh, I, f I was gonna make a wild gesture, but then I remembered I didn't plug in hand tracking. Uh, sir, so, uh, you tell me a... <laughs> sir, so, um, the idea for today is to get literally anything done at all. Uh, I've put together a basic bitch structure that involves uh, a menu and a combat scene. I'm not touching the menu for a good long while because I'll be running the combat scene independently. The combat scene uh, is basically the the setting for for this. I've put I've put in uh, I've put in a ship and I've put in a sun and uh, I'm I don't know basically anything about 3D graphics and a lot of this I'll have to learn as I go along. Thank you, sir. Much appreciated, Chip Hat. Um. Oh yes, that is what you have sent, uh, General. Why am I? Why have I ping, been pinged in general? What is going on? Okay, I have no idea what just happened. Anyways, uh, the idea is uh, the core idea for this game. Uh, before we get into anything else at all, is uh, to be a six degree of freedom dogfighting sim. 
Six Degrees of Freedom's dogfighting sims in space. Oh, that's all good. That's all good. Oh, did you post and delete it? Uh, that's no stress. Um, the, the problem with Six Degrees of Freedom dogfighting sims in space with realistic uh, camera perception and uh, realistic uh, scaling and all that is that... Get my... Uh, come on, don't do that, chair. Um, is that fundamentally they're incredibly boring. Um, it's impossible to find your opponent. Once you find your opponent, it's impossible to hit your opponent. Uh, and uh, basically the whole thing is going to be hiding behind asteroids or hiding behind planets or hiding behind literally everything and, and, and the, any celestial body you can care to find and hoping to get lucky. So I'm hoping to get around this via a number of uh, mechanisms. One of those is uh, custom viewports and jettisonable cameras. So while making your way around whatever uh, setting you're dealing with, during the dogfight, ideally you can... Well, um, to to explain that, I'm gonna have to lead with... Uh, once upon a time, I kickstarter backed Planetary Annihilation, and one of the promises, Planetary Annihilation, uh, which was a... <laughs> Long story short, it was a clone of Total Annihilation that happened on spherical planets. Uh, and any real-time strategy game on spherical planets uh, is kind of begging to be a huge mess, and the amount of coherency they wrangled out of that concept was just mildly impressive to me. One of the um, one of the points they raised, and I wouldn't say promised, but seriously considered implementing during dev, was additional windows. And additional windows, specifically in a real-time strategy game, are an incredibly powerful tool. And the reason they didn't end up doing this was because it made uh, playing the game wildly unfair for different people. Uh, based on, like, if, if you had an extra monitor, you could put extra an extra window on an extra monitor, and you suddenly had a extra viewpoint on the, uh, on the conflict. And extra intelligence in a real-time strategy game can make or break uh, your army's development and basically the round. So they couldn't do that. And uh, in my time, I've seen a couple of games flirt with the idea, but nobody's ever really gone for it or tried to implement it. So the core tenet of this game is going to be Six Degree of Freedom Dogfighter with arbitrary viewpoints and camera settings. And yes, this will skew uh, combat unfairly, uh, but I am at this very early stage of development deciding to not care. Either I will get around this by making, uh, by uh, hard capping the amount of viewpoints per player, or by nesting viewpoints within a single uh, window, or I will just not get around it, and that will be a characteristic of the game. I don't know. Uh, one decision I have made is to make uh, to keep the graphics uh, in the main body of the game as simple as possible, uh, so that uh, at least theoretically available screen real estate is much more of a hard cap than uh, than processing power or graphic re graphics rendering ability for a, for a given uh, computer. So, ideally you can throw up 10 of the same scene, uh, and because it's all like the most basic polygons you've ever seen, like possibly asteroids quality ship, uh, then uh, in terms of at least actually rendering the thing, there aren't, there aren't many uh, differences. Uh, so what I need for this, uh, for this scene is I need a player controlled ship, uh, I will eventually. I what, what I really want is I want to use a current collider for this, but there isn't a deferred, default current collider uh, or a current mesh. So I'll probably have to make one. Um, that that will probably be, probably be really really simple once I actually read up on it. But at this moment in time, it's not something I know how to do. I mean, I can literally just fire up Blender and do it in five minutes with with the right tutorial. Probably in one minute. Cause come on, it's a current. You can turn a cylinder mesh into a current. See, half of the reason I wanted to do this stream series is because I'm really hoping that people hop in chat and tell me how to do the really, really obvious things that I don't know how to do. Um, how can I do so? Uh, right now, I'm just using capsule mesh uh, because it was closer technically than a cylinder mesh. Uh, but I should be able to just you know, inspect a capsule cylinder shape uh, mesh instance cylinder mesh. 
Okay. Um. Now what do I do? <laughs> this is the shit. That's the real question. Uh. But before before I get into that, immediately what I will do is I some child nerds. Uh. To represent stuff that I will replace later. If I click on the mesh icon on the right, yes. Uh. Top radius. Oh. There we go. No. Oh. Easy mode. Thank you. That was really easy. Collision shape. Um. Transform. Uh, how can I do the same thing for collision shape? Um, wait, can I also change height? Yes, I can. Can I do it? Uh, no. What is the key I have to hold to? Oh, I can just manually change this. Oh, come on. There we go. That's a good start. Yeah, that solves the mash, but it doesn't solve the collider. I'm not sure if I wanted to solve the collider, actually. Uh, visibility process added a description cylinder. Oh, uh, I can just click on it like the other one. Okay, easy. Uh, radius. Oh no, it only has the one radius for the collider. Okay, I will worry about this later. This goes in the slingshot channel uh, problems. Uh, that. Uh, turn collider. Match. Turn mesh. Gadura does not have, like having complex collision shapes like that. Um, at least for moving bodies. Can I get around it by nesting two cylinder colliders, one thinner than the other one? Because if I do like two or three colliders like that, I'm assuming that'll be good enough. I'm not. Uh. Let's be honest, it's a 3D dogfighter sim. Uh, if I if I make the collider a sphere, it'll probably be fine. Let's just do that for now. Uh, what I will need to do there is I will need to... Which axis is Y? Uh, green is Y. There we go. That's... Oops. I'm still getting used to it. Uh, that is looking... Pretty accurate, actually. I might shift it back up to like a negative 0 0.2. No. 0 0.3? I just want something that, like, worthy of a uh, programmer art that will take me through a prototype phase because, for all I know, after 10 or 20 hours of dev, I will just find out that this entire concept is just fundamentally unplayable. I would like to find that out as soon as possible before I, you know, put time into it and texture things. That would be silly. So, in theory, I know a lot about this process, but in practice, I am expecting to make an incredibly large amount of very stupid mistakes. Okay, so we've got that. That's actually pretty solid. Um, now... That's pointing up. Well, that's pointing towards the y-axis. Get rid of the whole concept of up. The enemy's gate is down and all that. Also, I love your username. Okay, so we have a sum. Uh, we have a nerd that will represent, uh, quote-unquote asteroids. Uh, which will just be, uh, random, uh, astral bodies floating around in, uh, in orbit of whatever main planetary astral, astral body we have, or possibly no planetary body. Uh, I don't know. We might just issue the whole concept for certain stages. Uh, and then we definitely... Oh, I can't drag and drop. I just have to click create. Okay. Um, no. That one, I want that to be. Yeah, there we go. There. There we go. Uh, planet. So, um, I also don't know how to do like object generation or hierarchy or basically anything you need to establish an object oriented uh, structure that, that does any of this. Uh, but we'll worry about those later. Right now, I, if I can just have the ship move through a 3D coordinate system, that'll be a massive accomplishment, because uh, one of the things that I'm not sure if it will work at all is the control scheme for any of this. Now, uh, if I run this, does it uh, shoot itself? That's the question. Failed to build project. No overload for what? Oh, right. I'm trying to... Yes, let's take a look at the script. Um, can I 
can I shrink this? No, I can't. Well, I'll just have to get used to typing in tiny, tiny text window, I guess. So, uh, my core problem here is that I've set up the basic controls for uh, 3D translation and rotation. But um, this whole input get vector pro concept. What is this? What is this script? I didn't ask for that script. Let's just use this one. What? Come back. Is this some sort of unsaved, rest restored thing? I don't want this. I want to close that. There we go. Hopefully I don't have a copy of that hanging around. That'll be silly. Alright, so I've taken the default uh, boilerplate file for motion in gravity, and I've just deleted the gravity and a few other things. Uh, I've replaced the vector 2 with the vector 3, and now because I actually have no idea what classes uh, Gooder offers, I've run into dumb issues like this one, where, well, well, let me just, let's just do this, and then chuck this behind my face, but, uh, you, go on the front, magic, perfect, um, so, get vector, uh, is, only a 2D construct, and I can't seem to find a corresponding 3D construct. Admittedly, I haven't looked very hard, uh, so I guess that's what we will do now. Oops. Nope. Der docs. 1.1 branch. Search docs. Vector 3. Only about vector 3. Search results vector 3 methods. Uh, geometry 3D, physics direct body state. Oh, hello. Uh, I'll check that in a moment. Static body 3D. D sharp exports, rigid body 3D, box occluder. Okay. What about input? What can the input class offer me? Uh, handling, using viewports. Uh, I don't know what that is, but it sounds relevant. Creating input actions. I've got that. Input property descriptions, input examples, input events. Um. Your first 2D shader, later. Well, no, we're skipping straight to 3D shaders. What are intermediate steps, anyway? I'm going to make all of the mistakes, uh, probably out of sequence. No, but what I want is the input class, uh, input event. Input event with event, input event. Finishing up. Um, I wish this had documentation. I'm too used to Visual Studio having, like, actual uh, documentation and... Uh, tips and stuff. Also, move toward, okay, move toward covers change and change in velocity. Um, no stress, um, as long as you know, like, class names and stuff, that should transfer over, and the rest of C-sharp I can use. I've been using it professionally for a while. Uh, it's just I'm not familiar with the Godot ecosystem specifically. Input rotation, input get vector. So, what I really want is um, to how to parse uh, six independent directional one axis inputs uh, and translate it into a uh, what's the word? A real numbered? No, not a real numbered. Um, what's a real number? Yeah, you know, a real numbered vector, a real numbered th uh, 3D vector. This is, I don't know what this does, I assume it normalizes the vector. I've just kind of stolen that. And we want to normalize the vector because then we're multiplying it by the speed. And the speed is going to have to be a value that I can programmatically modify because I want realistic acceleration. Um, well, no, I don't want realistic acceleration. What I want is I want uh, the turning circle of the ship, TLDR, to exist, uh, to exist, to increase with velocity, um, to increase with speed, speed sorry, not velocity, um, it's going to be very important to this project that I learn to distinguish intuitively between speed and velocity, because they're going to be two very different things. Um, ship camera, we're not worried about ship camera at the moment. Okay, so first, first of all, what I want to do is I want to find a method that compiles, uh, six 1D inputs into a 3D vector. 
Uh, which means the... Okay, what if I put input get vector? Yes, physics moment. Um, correct. Hey, Killbot, I fixed the chat, so now you can see what you're typing on stream. Look, magic. Hooray! <laughs> Um, up to date. 2D movement overview. 8-way movement. What's 8-way movement? Oh, that must be rotation? No. Why would you have rotation in... You only need one axis rotation in 2D gaming. Okay. Um, 3D movement. Please. Your first 3D game. 3D navigation. The actual agent custom scripts. Okay. Gudo provides multiple objects, classes, and service to facilitate grid-based... Or mesh-based uh, navigation and pathfinding. Okay, no, that's not what we need. The first 3D game. Um, is that the Blender logo? Okay. The game will code here is similar to first. You can now jump and your goal is to... No, that's not what we want. I want... The problem with a 2D game with jumping is that it still requires a 2D vector for position and orientation. Um, and doesn't have a... Well, it doesn't have the two other rotational angles, so that doesn't help. Um, and if Godot lacks an element like this, then I'm going to have to learn Unreal, and I don't want to have to learn Unreal. That sounds like a pain in the ass. Uh, no, we don't want navigation. We want input handling. Using input event, input examples. Let's just look at input examples. Input map, capturing actions. Once you've defined your actions, you can process them in your scripts using is action pressed and is action released by pass, passing the name of the action you're looking for. Um, I might have to do that manually. If I do have to do that manually, it'll be incredibly boring to watch, but uh, that's an option. Come on. Okay, so the idea here would be to take every every axis dependently pointing to the positive input, check positive input against the corresponding negative input to get uh, cases where opposite input cancels out. Combine three dimensions into vector three to describe uh, movement. Maybe you want something like uh, z vector input get action straight forward input get action straight back. Yeah, that's what I'm. Th that's basically what I'm thinking. Um, yeah, and that's what is action pressed. Uh. Um, is all this documentation in C sharp? No, it isn't. It, uh, yeah, that is. Oh, uh, there we go. Okay, there's a C sharp tab for every example. Amazing. Um, physics process. Does this goes in? Does this go in physics process or does it go in input? I'm putting it in physics process for now. Um, the structure of this entire project is going to be a complete dog's breakfast until I probably refactor it in like three months. I have no idea. Water time. Thank you. I'm actually low on water, so I'm going to uh, go get some more water. I will be right back. Okay, yeah, that that makes sense intuitively. <laughs> Alright, let's do that. Um, I can probably... I need to need gravity. If I do need gravity, I'll implement it as a direct object interaction. And I'll just approximate... I'll just do what Outer Wilds did and approximate Newtonian physics at high... Dis high, high? High distance? 
long distance at long distance at better Caplarian physics. I need to relearn orbital, orbital mechanics for this. Game update? What do you mean, like, for this? I don't know, I don't, I don't know what, to, what you're talking about, Killbot, but, uh, yes. The, it's statements like these that made me think you were a Markov chainbot when I met you first. Geometry dash. Oh! Right. Okay, yeah, that makes more sense. Okay, we can probably get rid of all of this garbage. Uh, but I will block comment it out first, just in case, in case I need it from here later. Alright. What's at of- why does the event have an, have an at symbol on it? Oh, is that the... Well, that only passes in the delta. How do I pass? Welcome, welcome to lack of basic Godot knowledge. How do I pass extra variables into, into the, um, input event? How did this handle input event? Oh, it's called input. Um, the 2.0 job. Oh. How long has that game been around? Like, a decade at least, right? I would hope significantly longer if they're spending seven years on one update, Jesus. Um... Physics... Physics process... Input event. It's time for... time... there we go. The input events have to be handled in the process. Um, I'm hoping that, uh, googling random terms like this gets me. Uh, oh yeah. Rip feature group, okay. Um, group. Oh, input! Okay, you can just use the input class directly. Allegedly. Input with action pressed, uh, pressed forward. Uh... Oh, I should just do that first, actually. Um, that has vector 3 in it. Uh, and that might work. That might work, but now that's not defined. The velocity is fine. Ruben's slide is a default value. Okay. That should build, at least. No, what have I done? Dropped a bracket. What have I dropped a bracket? Oh, yes. Okay, fair. Do they have a hotkey? Go to the project. Input does not have a definition for is action pressed. Oh, it's got on. Welcome, welcome to the tedious part of the thing. Oh. Oh, Jesus, yeah. Okay, failed to. Uh, okay, so that doesn't exist either. Am I looking at a GD script example? I think I am. Um, the first 3D game input examples event. Oh, it's kind of case sensitive. That might be the that might be the problem. I don't know. There's going to be a lot of stupid trial and error here. The name print does not exist. Okay. Um, GD dot print. Uh, I'm assuming that goes to console. Okay. Um, look at API. Oh, my controller's not plugged in. One sec. Uh, I don't know if it has to be. Well, it's not doing anything. Um, let's try that again, but with the controller actually plugged in. Okay, no, no luck. Okay, how do I breakpoint any of this? Okay, what does that actually get me? No breakpoint? No, no anything? Maybe I should have used something other than a control stick for my first test. Uh, your has shoulder buttons, so we'll use that. doesn't do the thing, okay. I have to get used to this. All 
right. Okay, none of the buttons are doing anything. Um, do I have my actions named correctly? Project settings, start. In. What was any of this? Um, uh, Gooder action. Play scene and input actions. New scene, other nerd, character body, character body. Okay, so it's in character body, right? But, but where in character body is it? Inspect a nerd history, properties, there. Found um, nerd, a script. Yeah, there's gonna be really boring ones. Like, unfortunately, doing it this way, uh, it's probably the only way I can think of to actually learn Godot as opposed to learning how to follow tutorials. I've ended up in tutorial hell one or once or twice too many for my own liking, and I don't want that to happen again. The process is going to be more boring as a result, but hopefully the effect will be, well, permanent. Two input events. Oh, we just covered this. Nerd scene. Nerd. Nerd 3D. Scene. Uh, collision shape. Project settings. Project settings, okay. Well, there we go. Uh, input mode. Press forward. Your left. Yeah, this they should all exist. Okay. So that shouldn't be a problem. Uh, if I could get anything like a responsive breakpoint, that'd be great. Maybe... Is physics process even being called for this thing? Like, I can't tell. Um, oh, I'm going to make the wild assumption that physics process isn't being called because I'm not spawning a ship. Uh, in Twitter, instantiate nerd. Nerds and scene instances. How do I spawn summon a nerd object? Yes, Reddit, help me, Reddit. Get nerd monster summon location. Um, Bar nerd, class type nerd, nerd, set name nerd, add child. Um, all our class types. Okay, well. I'm about to. And it's going to be. The default nerd script. Ready. I'm assuming ready is run once on instantiation and processes run every physics frame. Yeah, that makes sense. Uh, I'm I'm playing the combat scene directly. If I'm playing the main scene, then I need to instantiate those as well. But worry about that later. Okay. Okay, so how do I actually link the parent child's child relationships? I need some sort of node hierarchy tree search. So child's. Ow, thanks, Brain. What is this? Okay, let's hold on. Over here, let's shrink the cat to like 400. Oops, no. That's pretty spot on, I'll just leave that there. Okay. Um, okay, so first of all, before I can instantiate this, I need to actually locate a child nerd. Add a child. Oh, nerd. Oh, class type. Okay, so I need to find the class type before I can add the nerd as a child. Um, instancing a scene. Class type dot new isn't a method in Godot. Bridge body 2D doesn't contain the method new. How to pass parameters. Uh, I have a simple scene that contains a sprite node as its root. The sprite node has a sample player 2D as a child. 
Um, how to pass constructor parameters to the sprite node while essentially it from inside another scene. That's more complex than what I need right now. Create your own init function and call it in. Okay, so the ship itself has scripts attached to it. But they're all partial classes. Okay, so this ship is a class. How do I differentiate a variable name? Oh my god. Okay, so maybe that works. Okay, if, if I run it, it'll at least tell me how I've done this wrong. A uh, ship does not contain a definition for new. Oh, yes, okay. Um, that's fine. Um, search. Create a create node instance. What? Nerd. Okay, let's just read the page on nerd. Inherits object. Okay, so it's the most basic bitch possible uh, type. Can be assigned as the child of a nerd, resulting in a tree arrangement. Um, a scene nerd. When a nerd is added to the scene tree, it remains, receives a notification and a center tree callback is triggered. By the camera in my scene. Um. Yes. There is a camera. Wait. Yes, but it's not in my scene for. Wait, what now? No. Okay, apparently not. Um, I'm uh, right now. I'm not even worrying about that because I'm trying to get the controls to respond. But I, perhaps you're right in that. Possibly that should be like the first thing I should do. Oh, okay. No, I'm done. Thank you. Better. Well spotted. Okay, so by default, this should probably look at the ship from some. Um, canted, uh, 3D, 3D angle. So I have the camera, and the camera itself is... Uh, a 3D camera. But where is it positioned relative to the, to the ship? I don't know. Um, I'm hoping that it's, uh... Yeah, it's just in the ship. Okay. Maybe I don't want it to be in the ship. Maybe I want it to be... Want... Hmm. Where do I want it to be relative to the ship? I can offset this, right? Um... Which way does this offset it? I don't know what that does. Keep height, FOV. I'm gonna have to figure out how cameras work. Um, but in the context of this, I should be able to. Yeah, there we go. Oh, the ship is pointing up. Ship shouldn't be pointing up. Ship should be pointing up direction. Yeah, let's make X the up direction. There. Why? There we go. Oh, and then, then the cone is pointing in the wrong direction. Uh, possibly I'm... Shit. Possibly I'm overcomplicating this. What center point is this rotating around? Okay, there we go. Oh, what a mess. Okay, good enough. Position, rotation, node, 3D. Am I rotating in the direction of X? Oh, that's a 3D... Uh, 360 rotation. I don't know. Oh, 90 degree rotation. Um, that was the collision mesh. I don't care if the collision mesh is rotated. What am I doing? Press F. You can center around the selected thing. Uh, press F on my keyboard. There we go. Thank you, sir. Uh, and slash all madam. 
Um, okay, now I can custom A, B, B. I don't know what that is. Uh, I don't care about the mesh specifically, I care about the mesh's orientation. There we go. That's not what I wanted. Very nice. Okay, so the sphere collider is still here. Oh wait, but now the sphere collider is incor incorrectly offset. Uh, well done me. Uh, negative 0.3x, 0y. Wait, what have I done? I've removed the mesh instead of the collider. Oh, uh, redo, wait. Yeah, that's fine. Remove the collider, please. It's not moving the item in the right direction. Oh, it's the z-axis. Oh, we've rotated around the x-axis. Okay, no, that's not what I wanted. Okay. Believe me. A mesh. I want to rotate around the z-axis. Ideally by 90... No, apparently negative 90 degrees. Be pointing towards the x-axis. Very good. Okay. Collision shape. Look at zero. And now we want to do three. There we go. Okay. So that's now doing what I want. Okay, and thrust will be in X direction. Eve is in Y and Sway is in Z, and that's exactly what. Whereas why it's roll is around X, pitch is around Z. Yeah. Right. It was around Y. Okay, that's what we want for axes. But I still just wanted to recognize buttons, and in order to, for it to recognize buttons, the object needs to be... Um, I also don't know how to designate the ship camera as the default camera. Um, is there a hotkey for running the game? Yes, F5. Okay, very good. Not yet. Um, I don't know if the problem is with the class name or with the method. Nerd processing groups tutorials, nodes and screens, nodes and scenes. Okay. Properties string string name nerd methods enter tree exit tree get configuration input physics process process ready. Put get input unhandled unhandled key add child add sibling add group. All things create twin duplicate. Nice. Find child. Get child. Move notify print tree. Signals. Okay. Helpful. Um. My sprite get print. Um. The ship doesn't have a creating creation method. Um, how do I know if I'm even calling the right? I can't navigate to the class. Can I drag? Wait. I don't know what that does. Uh, should instant. Uh, ship new. Where's that tutorial? Nodes and scenes, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Name, editable properties. 
they together they form a tree scenes um scenes work like new node types yes okay that i get creating my first scene create a new project in an empty scene uh, add a control the create node dialog options create select the label Yeah, 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 changing those properties. Running the scene. They've seen as dialog. Yes, yes, yes. Okay, so when they've done that here, they've put a label in the scene. Yes, that's fine. Setting the main scene, we've done that. Um, the demo should run again. Creating instances of the scene. There we go. Gone. In the previous part, we saw that a scene is a collection of nodes. Here's an example of a ball. Once you save the scene, it works as a blueprint. Yes. Instance scenes behave like a node. The editor hides their content with. When you instance the ball, you only see the ball node. Every instance of the ball scene starts with the same structure. Um, no. Project controls two packed scenes, main and ball. The main scene should open automatically. Let's add a ball. Double click the ball scene to it. Oh. Bloody no. Oh, that's good. Yeah, okay. Oh, the camera's did incorrectly. Oh, I've rotated it around. No, I need to rotate that around. Why? Leave me. Wrong direction. There we go. Might be upside down, but we don't care. Ah, uh, scene. And she child scene. And she had a scene. I want heard. Based on heard and seen it. No, no, no. Is this instantiated, instanced, or not? Like, is this single instance of uh, the ship in the combat scene spawning by default on launch? Because if so, it should be running this physics logic, and it doesn't feel like it is. But I should be able to click this and then instance it, right? Instantiate child scene. The ship is not a child scene. Possibly the ship should be a scene. Add an instance of a scene to the child. Then again, no, but that, that implies that um, planets and asteroids should be independent scenes, but maybe the sun shouldn't be, because it's just like a point light source. And the ship shouldn't be, because there's only the one of them. But there isn't only the one of them, because it'll be multiplayer. Um, but it is the player-controlled ship. And if I don't do it this way, then I'll have to redo it later for multiplayer anyway. Uh... Okay, so then what do I want? Hmm. I should have desktop audio on so people can scare the shit out of me with sound alerts. I forgot about that. Um. Hmm. Hmm. I'm supposed to be resting my chin on that. Come on, hand tracking. Pull your weight here. Good enough. Whatever. Yep, does not contain the definition for This is a nerd. I'll map this out and try and run it. Okay, so that's running. Yeah. Um, that would make sense, and yet it's not doing the thing. Uh, ready process. Oh, wait. Do I need to call this process manually? That would make a little bit of sense.
an object reference, right? Okay, well maybe I need to find the child ship. Find a child nerd. Meaning the player scene, nerd structure, nerd. Didn't end up with like duplicates of every every tab open. Entry, nodes and scenes. Um, okay, void, enter tree, exit tree. Find children. Find a child, string pattern. What's what is this method? Whose name matches pattern? Okay. Combat does not contain a definition for find child. It's a nerd. Oh, it's tough. Okay, there we go. Debugger is listing things. Errors. Avoid combat but process double. Okay. Um you script you have it dollar before dollar sign before. I think that's what happened when I dragged it in. I think that I did do the thing right. Can't drop nodes because script combat CS is not used in this scene. Okay, then how do I okay well first of all let's stop generating null reference errors. Um, you do print yep. What? I mean, save resources. What is this? What do we have two versions of this ship with this script all of a sudden? This. GD print yep. Ideally this prints the class name if a class exists. Uh, realistically it just prints null because none of that worked. Yep, there we go. Okay, so it can't find the child. Um how do I display children? Um there is a find children, yeah. Handle type matches type. Internal children are also searched. Pattern does not match against the full path. Case sensitive. Um okay, so let's try find children. Uh, replace ship with a wild card. And then... Let's see what this is. Cannot convert from bool to string. Oh, string type. Uh, no, come on. Um, recursive true or true, okay. And my keyboard layout's changed on me. Okay, and it's returning an empty array. Which means... This add child is probably what I need. Nerd, nerd, as a child, nerd. Nerds can have every number of children. New ship. False. Maybe that works. No, it's still an empty array. I'm assuming that's what that means. Maybe it's just that's the symbol for a 1D array. What if I go ship first? Uh, or default. Does this method exist? Or is that like a helper class method that I'm too used to using? No. Oh, it's an array.
It's not printing anything. Should I be worried? Oh my god, look, look at this, we did it. A great success, okay. This is progress. I'm gonna take a quick bathroom break to celebrate. Right. Take care, Chip Hat. Good night. All the best. And yes, I am back. Okay. So, what have we done? We've created a ship within the combat section. Then, uh, find. Uh, well, first of all, this makes sense that this still works if we find the ship. Uh, then we'll have to fix this uh, to deal with multiple ships. Uh, but then once the ship is instantiated, the physics process runs automatically. Okay, that still works. This isn't printing anything. Wait, so this is this isn't actually doing anything, I think. We can just print this stuff. And that's that's just So we've instantiated the ship and that's all it takes, right? Yeah, okay, perfect. Alright, um, now that we've instantiated the ship, uh, the first thing I'm going to do is uh, basically duplicate this to do all of the directions and make sure all the controls work. Then we'll start replacing the controls with motion. No, and then once we uh, replace all the controls with motion, then we will implement the camera. implement this. Oh, hey, we can. Um, oh, no, does it have its own janky? Uh, yes, it does, but it also supports C-Sharp. So you, you will be fine. Um, it's own scripting language I've actually heard really good things about, but I basically I don't really want to learn a new language, so C-Sharp it is. Yeah. All right, we've got thrust forward, thrust back, heave. Oh, my keyboard got janked. 
up. Um, really good things. Um, basically, people don't complain about it. Eve down. My understanding is that even before Godot su supported C sharp, um, the following of the the following it had was quite strong. Uh, I don't know how much of that was due to its open source nature, which is probably why a lot of people are gravitating to it rather than Unreal, given in light of what Unity has been doing. Um, I have no reference for that. Is that, like, what am I supposed to think, given given what you have said? Tell me what to think, Beacon. Educate me. should all work. Alright. Thrust forward, thrust back. Thrust back isn't doing anything. Your left. Your left and your right are working. Uh, heave down and heave up are working. Okay, first things first. Thrust forward, thrust back isn't working. Sway left and sway right. Heave up and heave down are fine. Your left, your right, roll left, roll right, pitch down, pitch up. Okay, so it's just thrust back that isn't working. Uh, did I name it thrust backward like an idiot? Probably did. In project, project settings. Thrust reverse, I named it thrust reversed. Um. Oh, okay. Um. No, but. Like, that doesn't seem like a relevant characteristic. Like. Uh. Is it commonly used? What is it? Oh. So, I, okay, sure. So, it's Turing complete relative to whatever output formats are supported, yeah. Fine. Let's just make sure that works. Okay, thrust reversed now pro produces debug output, very good. Now, do I want to deal with velocity in the vector format? I kind of have to, I think. Do I want to have a speed multiplier? Hey, Kada! Oh no! Um, please get well soon. All the best. Uh, wishing you, wishing you a great time. Thank you for popping in and at least saying hi. I really appreciate it. Type in chat. I can type in chat. Ha! Got him. Um, but yes, all the best. Please take care of yourself. Don't don't uh, strain yourself doing things you shouldn't be doing and all that. You know, boilerplate uh, illness handling text here. Uh, okay, so... I am going to have to figure out quaternions. Okay, um, I, again, I have no context for any of this. I'm going to have to, like, pick your brain for, like, what even is going on. Um, in, in this, uh, okay, let's get rid of speed for now. We don't care about speed. Speed is a multiplayer that makes motion look good, and that's, uh, going to be scaled relative to all other objects anyway. But right now we'll just work with unit velocity, uh, controls, and then we'll, we'll mess around with that later. Hmm. Is default velocity controls one meter per second or one meter? Wait, it's one meter per second per second per frame, probably. I'll worry about it later. Ideally, once we implement a camera, we'll have an easy visual referent. Um, that's kind of the plan, but even Delta V is going to need, like, a scalar modifier to look good. Doesn't this have, like, stock physics? Um, yeah, but the stock physics are gravity-related. Or do you mean, like, vector manipulation in service of stock physics? Yeah, probably. Um, 
I would hope so. Um, I will worry about that once more than one body exists and I have to implement gravity. I'm not implementing ship to ship gravity. Actually, no, I'm going to have to implement ship and ship to ship to ship gravity because I'm going to have a mass manipulation mechanic. Shit. Okay. Well, that's something I'm going to have to consider. Eh. So that works. If action is pressed, thrust forward. Well, it's an axis, right? So, um, it's an it's an analog control. Uh, input anal control value. I mean, yes, uh, the end body problem is really easy to solve in video games. It's called iterate through all of your variables and stepwise increment um, distances. Because uh, all you have to do, um, all you have to do is you just have to In, uh, update forces, right? You have to update forces at every uh, every frame, and that's easy. That's just iterating through a list. Introducing the new axis handling system. This article is from April 2018. Okay, well, that's not new, is it? What's in velocity? Um, no, velocities are a property of the object, so you only have to update force and velocity follows. Important. Well, point is, that's a future problem. Right now, we're barely able to, like, get control inputs. Events versus pulling. Uh, that's fine. Speed. Position dot X. Okay, so I do need, I need to, do need velocity and I need a separate vector. Uh, velocity isn't a thing. No, rotation isn't a thing. Where is this value coming from? So I can safely assume that that's what that do that's doing. Okay, uh, take care. All the uh, have a safe flight. Beacon. All the best, and I will talk to you later. Bye. Okay, what on earth is going on in here? Okay, I, d I don't need this this diagram. I'm gonna get rid of that. This, uh I was structurally self-documenting, which I love. What? There we go. Character body 3D. What properties does character body 3D have? Navigation agents, character body 3D. Description, tutorials, properties. Floor block on all, floor constant speed, floor max angle, floor snap length, floor stop on slope. All of these are values used to run along floors. I don't want that. Platform on leave, safe margin, light on ceiling, up direction, velocity. Uh, okay, it has velocity. Of course it doesn't have rotation. Get floor normal. I am definitely getting the feeling like I'm trying to build a game in a system not designed for it. Um... Computer, character, body, 3D, orientation. Make 3D character face direction of movement. Uh, in 3D space. Using 3D transforms. That sounds promising. Working with rotations in three dimensions. Uh, the da da da. Yeah, yeah, oil angles, yes, yes, yes. This way of representing three rotations was groundbreaking at the time. Um, the idea of the document is still play. Uh, explain why problems with oil angles. Um, axis order. There isn't a unique way to construct an orientation from the angles. I mean, yes. That's, yeah. Yeah, it's order specific. Okay, so uh, you may be wondering. Yes, yes, yes. Um, yeah, because you're mapped to a sphere, and rotations at different locations in the sphere have different effects. Population. Okay.
Oh, the angles don't interpolate over a straight line. Yeah, okay. Hmm. Gimbal lock, okay. I'm gonna have to learn about gimbal lock properly this time. Great. Do not use the rotation property of node 3D nodes in Godot for games. Um, transforms. Transform 3D data type for orientations. Okay. There we go. I'm hoping the character node has a transform property, and if it doesn't, we'll find out now. Okay, it seems to like that. That's promising. Okay, so we can eat all of I really should have kept that code I just deleted. Add vector management. Vector normalizing. Sorry. Let's keep that as a comment. That could be a good reference. Uh, the rest of it probably there. Uh, math F move toward. Maybe I want move toward as well. be a problem for controls that are positioned at opposite ends of uh, analog stick axes, but if I want to put in manual control remapping, custom control remapping, then I want, then I need to account for this in every pair of axes because they could be assigned to anything. Assuming that the transform property of the ship lists its current orientation and is not zeroed, which is probably reasonable. That's a shitty naming convention, but that's fine. I'm further assuming that I can sum two transforms and get not nonsense out, which I could be wrong. About our basis. with the basis a transform also has an origin. Oh, that's what a basis is. Okay. So you apply a transform to a basis and that changes the unit vector? It's not a unit vector. It's... It's a vector 3. No. What is a basis? Transform has a basis which consists of three vector three vectors. These are accessed via the transform basis. Okay. A basis can so can also be interpreted as a three by three matrix and used as transform basis x y. That's how is that a three by three matrix? Oh, it's two ve vector. It's two vector threes. Um. Hmm. Manipulating response. I'll look at that in a moment. I should be able to... Where's debug output? Here is debug output. Uh, what format does this print in? Perfect, that's what we're doing.
Uh, I don't think printing transform directly yields anything cool there. X, Y, Z, zero. What's zero? Okay, that's pretty good. That's pretty good. We'll, we'll start with that. Uh, let's transform this velocity. Delta V. X. Equals. Right. We're interpreting analog controls before we got distracted. there's an input class I can look at, right? I feel like I've asked this question already. Input handling. Input method. Input class, there we go. Properties, use accumulated input. Action press, action release. No. Add a joy mapping, no. Get accelerometer. Get action strength. Okay, what's the difference between these? Turns a value further it is from the dead zone. Ignoring the actions dead zone. Okay, so we won't get action strength. That's exactly what we want. Um, uh, let's print that. Oh, this debug is going to be... Okay, getting, getting uh, an action. Um, that means your increment velocity very fast if I do this every frame. So this should probably actually have a speed variable. Yeah, that wasn't a constant. What did, what did this camera? I can't remember. forever though, so let's set it to 0.1 and go for testing. And I'm going to need a different one for my transforms anyway. That's fine. Okay, so ideally we don't need these anymore because the information is going to be represented in Can I do this? Can I just add vectors like this? I can't. Oh, but it's also not registering it. New vector transform basis times new. Re normal. That's probably not what. Okay, what have I done? Let this find the same thing. Yeah. Um, delta V X should always start as. Um, I'm assuming the constructor takes three values. If it doesn't. Outputting velocity after I change it. Are we not getting velocity? Is a velocity like not updating? Yes, that must be wrong.
That should work. No, I failed to build product. Got to modify the return value of character mode. Fix it is not a variable. That's we don't care about that. Okay, what's your issue? Is that only a wait? What do you mean by return value? Okay, I think I have to use this line now. Exist. It's called Delta V, and I'm an idiot. There we go. Hey! Hey, it's doing the thing. Well, I can't go back yet, but... Oh, that's the position. Zero is the position. Okay, we like that. Awesome. So now we know the physics works. Now we should be able to... Rip. Wait, no, I'm an idiot. Hold on. doing nothing. Okay, cool. Uh, forward movement, backward movement, forward movement, backward movement. I'm gonna have to add some sort of stabilization, otherwise it'll be impossible to enter the ship in, like, any context. It's giving me the velocity vector, that's really nice. Heave up. Heave up also works. Can I do it just slowly? The dead zones on these things are massive, I'm gonna have to correct that. Okay. I'm getting analog response, so that's good. Left is going left. Why are these both assigned to? Oh, I forgot a negative. This is why we test things. This Drake is an idiot. Okay, right is negative. That's not what we wanted. Okay, down is negative. Reverse is negative. 
we want left to be negative. And right positive. At least that's what I guess I should be looking at the taxi. Uh, thrust up, down, left, re yes, that we want left to be negative. Cool. Uh, quick break for water. Uh, yeah, let's do that. So we've got the translation one. Now for the rotation, which means I have to figure out transforms properly. Hmm. Well. Ideally, I'm dealing with angular velocity, but I can't just have angular velocity. How do I define angular velocity in three dimensions? Hmm. Yeah, 3D case is significantly more complicated, I'm aware. Does it matter? Order of rotation even matter? It might matter. If we were applying things with mouse movement, but we're just applying directional angular velocity. And in that case, I should be able to apply it in multiple directions at once. So we need the problem with the basis vector is it doesn't give you orientation. You see the direction you're pointing. Does it? Okay. What is the what is the Gooder basis article say about this? I've way too many tabs open, hold on. Input handling, no. Plus input, no. No, no. Oh, I'm gonna have to figure out how to is it. Okay. 
Okay, we've covered that. We've covered that. Uh, I won't probably need that raid later. That's not relevant. That's not relevant. No. No. Got that. No. 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 I'll worry about that later. Sorted that out. Got that. Um. What is this? 3D character face direction to movement. No. That's not what we want at all, in fact. Manipulating transform. Alright. It's possible to rotate a transform. So a transform has three directional vectors. Be normalized into a unit vector. And it, they have a position. How do I store rotation? Transform basis equals transform basis rotated. Okay, that's easy. But I don't want to try to rotate the basis around the x-axis. I want to rotate the basis around the x-axis relative to the orientation of the ship, which I have no way to store. And this is where our order of rotation comes into pro becomes a problem. I'm probably just gonna have to do matrix multiplication to this. This is actually really complicated shit. Okay. Rotates the node relative to the parent node. To rotate relative to object space, rotate object local. How do I get the value for this? Um, what can you tell me about rotate object local? Using 3D transforms, manipulating transforms. Uh, do retrieve object rotation. Retrieve, oh. retrieve object orientation. One of these should. Oh. How do I get a 3D object global rotation? There we go. Global object position is global transform origin. Rotation slash rotation degree is always global to my knowledge. Okay. That's not what I want. Okay. 3D using transforms. What? What is this? Yeah, that's not helpful. Or maybe it is. Maybe I just need to scroll down further. Obtaining information. How do I get the angles from a transform? Um, imagine you need to shoot a bullet in the direction your players facing, just use the forward axis. Then you're looking at the players, da da da, yes, 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 da da. Um, setting information. There are, of course, cases when you want to set information. Imagine a first person controller or orbiting camera. You do want the transforms to happen in a specific order, yeah. Do I? Well, I, I want transforms to happen in input order. Oh, I just have to store the rotation separately. This is stupid. Oh, but I guess it does the thing. Okay, fine. the number. How do I map that number to a render? Because the transform doesn't contain enough information for this.
Why does this have two rotation axes? This is stupid. Shouldn't it need three? Here, oh, you have an up and a down. You have a mouse motion, you have Y, and that maps to a sphere, but it maps to a sphere. I guess I use the rotation values to modify the basis vector. But that still doesn't tell me how to, like... I guess it doesn't matter. Oh, get Quaternion, okay. Interpolating before, between two transforms can be done with Quaternions. Uh, okay. Quaternions 101. Uh, Quaternions and Spatial Rotation Wikipedia. Versus. Provide a convenient mathematical notation. Da 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 da. Ready visualization of a sphere and a rotation about an Euler axis. That sounds like exactly what I want. Rotation Quaternions as they represent the 3D rotation group. Attitude Quaternions. A special rotation around the fixed point of uh, theta radians about a unit axis. D X S Y S. D X S Y S Z S. Journey is a more compact, efficient, and numerically stable. I'll read about this off stream. Euler angles similar, simpler to compose. However, they're not as intuitive and easy to understand due to the periodic nature of sine and cosine. Rotation angles differing precisely by the natural period. I mean, yes, that's what you want. 0 to 2 pi is what you want your rotation period to be. Any rotational sequence of rotations or coordinate system about a fixed point is equivalent to a single rotation by a given angle theta around a fixed axis that runs through the fixed point. Okay, so you just calculate the Euler axis and then implement the rotation. Perfect. A simple way to encode this axis angle representation using four real numbers and can be used to apply the corresponding rotation to a position vector. Representing a point relative to the origin in R3. Okay. I definitely want quaternions. This sounds like it just does all the math for me, which is really amazing. Rotation angle. Um, okay, Godot quaternion object. Please. Please, Godot. Please don't, don't do me like this. Okay. Transform to basis get quaternion. No, I want a new quaternion. How do I... Quaternion type. There we go. A unit quaternion for representing 3D rotations. Basis stores rotation scale and shearing. I'll believe it when I see it. A 3x3 matrix for representing 3D rotation and scale. Okay. Usually used as an orthogonal basis. Contains three vector fields x, y, and z as its columns. Which typically interpreted as the local basis vectors. Okay, so I've actually got nine values, not three. I've gotten turned around here. It can also be accessed as an array of 3D vectors. These vectors are usually orthogonal to each other, but are not necessarily normalized due to scaling. Okay, so because we have three vectors, okay, I thought we only had one vector, that's stupid. No, we have three vectors, and those three vectors represent rotation. Okay, no, we're fine. Then. Okay, so... We have velocity, and velocity is getting updated. Um... And we're retrieving velocity from the velocity. Printing the transform and the velocity is obviously having an impact on the transform, but then in order to update the transform, we have to, well, manipulate it directly. Hmm. Okay. I want to apply a rotation directly to the basis. That sounds like it should be really easy, especially if I... Because we don't need an order of operations for the angles, we just apply them all at once. Um, or do we? 
even if it's stepwise rotation, we still need to kind of put a sequence on it, so maybe not. Okay. Converting a rotation to a quaternion is straightforward. Intrude transforms can be efficiently done. Okay. More information about how quaternions uh pretty much the main use of doing closest path interpolations. Um what? Transform accumulation, transform points, yes, yes, yes. That's fine. Um Okay, so what does this do? It converts mouse motion into root. Then set the basis to the identity? Why do you reset rotation? Oh, wait, hold on. Why would you reset rotation? I don't understand why you would reset rotation in this context. Rotate object local. Okay, let's just try this. Let's see what this does. Uh, I don't want to rotate it around vector 3 up. I want it to r rotate it around. Okay, so I don't actually need transform delta. I just use the transform directly. Um. I don't need an up, I need a unit vector. How do I get a unit vector? A directional unit vector out of a vector three. Uh, vector three, unit vector. A 3D vector, yes, yes, yes. Um, do I just have to normalize it myself? No, I had logic that normalized it. Transform basis, there we go. We'll just do this. Or do I want to do that at the top and get the normalized unit vectors? But that's literally what the transform is for. If I get. Okay, I need to reread the transform logic. Um, transform interpolation. No. I just literally want the transform. Transform 3D? No. Uh, what have I, what have I done? You know what, I should be, a sec, I'll just add my browser window to the, to the output, that'll make this way more interesting, I hope. There, window capture, browser. Oh, it located it on its own, very good. Capture method, what, I capture cursor client area. It's fine, and then we'll filter this, drop it slightly. Drop slash pad. Left. Okay, perfect. I want to drop it from the top by like pixels. No. Five. That's pretty good, actually. That. Make it a bit larger. Okay, there we go. So here's all the laughing about I'm doing in the back. Very nice. Now, where was I? Uh, third object. Ah, oh, that's not cut off quite enough. Filter. So I'm looking for transform. Um, 
it should have a transform property. Wait, where am I looking for? Oh, it doesn't even say. Okay, no, the node doesn't have a transform property. The character node specifically has a transfer property. Transform property. So I'm applying rotation to something. I'm applying local rotation, and I need to be applying it around a specific angle. So I have the X vector, and that should be the relative. Okay, so I just need the... Okay, so what, does, what options does vector 3 have? Surely that has a unit vector property. Method. Word. Constructors methods. Abs absolute. Okay, that should give me what I want. Returns a new vector with all the comp Oh no, that's not what I want at all. Angle 2. Bezier derivative. Bounce. Ceiling. Clamp. Cross. No. Direction 2. Distance 2. Dot. Floor. Inverse. Unit? Is there a unit? No. Normalized. What's this? Returns the result of scaling the vector to unit length. Okay, when I was looking at rotate local object. It said... You're kidding me. We just talk... Oh, rotate object local. Dumb. I'm awake. Stupid typo o'clock with shoulder drake. Um... Vector 3 up. Well, that gives a vector, right? So I should be just be fine with... Transform basis x normalized. I do what I want. I herp. Um, and then we have rotation, which is applied by the controls directly. Okay, let's experiment with that for a bit. variable or uh, flirt rotational angular velocity and this needs to be public static flirt angular velocity what is that radians if that's our point one, then I want it to be like five degrees. What's five degrees in radians? Uh, I need a calculator. Times pi divided by thirty-six divided by seventy-two. Your point R eight seven. That'll do. we have angular velocity, then we want the actual angular velocity to be... No, because then we want that to be... Velocity is a vector 3. Okay, so I can just that up. Um, okay. Then I can just take the vector. Really, you can take the magnitude of the vector, right? How do I take the magnitude of the vector? Vector 3. No, I don't need operators. I need methods. 
absolute uh, magnitude. Max move towards normalized. Was mod reflect rotated around sign signed angle two slope slide snapped no. Oh, I should be playing that again. Okay. Angle two bounce ceiling clamp cross oblate direction two. Wait, does this have a property? No. Instructors. Okay, so it literally just has the three the three vectors. Direction distance squared. What is this? Distance two. Returns the stitch. Oh, okay. No. Dot product. Floor inverse is finite, is normalized, is zero. Length is that what I want? Returns the magnitude, okay. Equals angular. Oops. I need like a shortcut key for the. For the uh, city length, uh, angular velocity over velocity dot length. So the faster you go, the slower you rotate. Is the idea? Oh, okay. Oh. So then I should just be able to run this, and that should be the thing. Will this build? Uh, what have I messed up? Vector 3 does not contain a definition for length. Right. E sharp is case sensitive as before. Not convert from method group to vector 3. Which one is the method group? Because vector three up returns one sec. Should return a unit vector, not a value. I want Okay, that should build. Yep. Operator can't divide. Where's the method group? It's a flirt. Velocity length. Um, oh, that's what they mean by method group. I forgot to chuck brackets on it. Silly me. Okay, um, what happens when I try to roll? Okay, it's printing something extra out. What is it printing? It's printing vector. Oh, okay, so I probably just failed the thing. Okay. So this is fine. Apparently normalized just needs brackets on the end. Okay, that's not doing anything because it's not mapped yet, but this is rotating me around the x-axis. So the unit vector for that is still the same. So now I'm just spinning in a circle. Well, that does seem to do what I want. But we're going to have to test this visually later. But this is progress. Now we have roll, roll controls. I'm just going to clone this for your and pitch and then make a surprised Pikachu face when it doesn't work like I expected later. Uh, that's rolling to the right. Oops. Yeah, let's let's try that. that should be, okay. So, a slight nudge to the left should give it... What does it do? Y and Z are modified in the Y and Z plane, which is what we want. Uh, I can't do this in my head, can I? Y has a negative Y and a positive Z, because that's relative to... 
I can't picture this. I'm, I, I'm gonna have to visually debug this. Um, I don't have magic vector brain. Uh, but at least in principle, it does what I want. The question is then, if I combine two of these, do they still do what I want? Okay. Your left and your right do this do the thing. And then we've got where Okay. Your Oh, I misspelled roll and roll right. Well done me. This is why we debug often. Pitch down is actually don't know what the orientation is for that mathematically. I'm just going to set this up as... I don't want that to be negative. And again, I'll have to test this visually to make sure it does the right thing, but at least in principle, it appears correct. Pitch up, and then I should be multiplying this by underscore angular velocity. And ideally, this shouldn't crash. Now we roll left. Not a number. Amazing. Don't tell me, angular velocity doesn't have a value. Oh, whoops. It's infinite because I'm dividing by zero. Well done, me. I need to do some sort of interpolation between a linear value. Oh, easy. Math, max, uh, velocity length, angular velocity. That should do it. So it should. Min, well done, me. <laughs> okay, so it should come out as, yeah, that, and then if we thrust, it goes down. But if our objective velocity goes down, perfect, that's what we want. Yeah. Very nice. Spot on. Okay, we're getting to the two and a half hour mark, so I think I might actually knock off here and leave the camera for either off stream or exciting future project. Great. Um, your. Uh, that seems to be right opposite directions. Can't even tell what was. Yeah. Okay, all of the pitch controls seem to be doing the things. Eve is working. What is going on? Oh, that's the angular velocity. That doesn't go negative. No, it doesn't go negative. Okay, it just decreases. That's fine. And then we should be able to go back through zero. Very nice. I should probably put some sort of quadratic curve on... Uh, or maybe a log, log on the... Uh, Angular velocity calculation, that seems like the obvious thing to do. Oh, that's that's my position. My position is doing the thing. Okay. 
Okay, so I can actually uh, control the ship. I can't see what the hell I'm doing, but I can now control the ship in, in three dimensions with six degrees of freedom. In in theory, in theory. We'll see what happens when we actually put the camera in. Um, What I need now... Well, first I need to stop debugging before all the numbers explode. I'm going to put this in my to-do list. Maybe I'll start tackling one of these. We need... Break. We need a axe. Okay. And do we need a max speed? Either we need a max speed or we need to implement relativity, and I'm not sure which of those we want to do. Um, the problem with max speed. And relativity, well, d with no max speed, is that uh, if this is a reasonable dogfighting sim, I'm going to have to implement boundaries to the to the. I mean, yes, obviously, I'm going to implement boundaries. I guess I put in a time limit. Uh, a time limit would make sense because uh, you'd have limited resources. Anyways, um, let's see if we can imp implement the break and maybe leave off on that. We'll worry about the exact things here later. I need to look at the action map again. Where's my map? In project settings, trust forward, your pitch in. I didn't add anything else. Oh, okay. Uh, where are my notes? Okay, what do my notes say? Break was A. That in. That new one. Perfect. Very nice. Action press break. Then what we want to do is we decrease velocity in all directions. Well, no, there's only one direction if it's velocity. Velocity. Increase velocity along the angular, uh, along the unit vector. Um. By a proportion of its length. Which means I'm gonna have to decompose and recompose it. Ugh. Delta VX. Okay, so let's browser around some more. Um, I'll be right back actually. One moment, please. Uh, what are we 
looking for? We're looking for get unit vector is the first thing I want. We'll impose this back uh, into. I don't want a unit vector. I just want the velocity vector. Okay, so I don't actually want this. Transform that at all. Okay. I want... Proportional inverses? No. Okay, well, I can't rely on the orientation of the ship to figure this one out. I need... Because we're stopping relative to the ether, to the objective frame of reference. So... No, that's really easy. We just take velocity and drink it. And then, then we take the normalized value of the vector. And this definitely needs some sort of log curve. That might do it. Let's try that as a naive, naive implementation and see what that does. Look, convert double to flirt, or am I dealing with a double? Now I need C-sharp things. Uh, oh, I was, whoops, whatever. Okay. Okay, so I'm trying to convert a flirt to a double, and that's fine. But then it wants to return a double. Hello. Um, it's surprisingly... Okay, so it's it's a huge slog because uh, I've never used it before and I've also never used Unity before, so I'm after having to re-derive some of the concepts. Uh, but just real quickly, I'm just going to comment this out so it stops crashing my code. And I'm going to display it so you can see what I'm doing. Um, I have managed to implement basic controls, so... Uh, we've got velocity manipulation based on the controller, so if I pick up the controller um, You can see this numeric readout down the bottom. So what this does is every frame it outputs angular velocity uh, Velocity and the transform which is Three unit vectors pointing in the relative X Y and Z directions and zero at the end Which is the position and then I can thrust forwards and you can see that the position is uh, increasing because I've got a, a forward velocity of 0 0.988 now uh, and then the further I push that up uh, first of all it's bound to the analog stick so if I just push it up by a little it increases slowly or I can slam it and it increases way faster and you'll notice that as I increase it the angular velocity drops and as I decrease it the angular velocity increases and the idea here is to oh now there's negatives going good because I'm going backwards uh, the idea here is that the faster we move, the slower the ship turns. Um, maybe this is stupid. It made sense in a 2D, a limited bound uh, spaceship sim. 
uh, but in this one it may not because, I mean, if your angular velocity is constant, then if you're moving faster, that automatically means you're turning slower relative to progress. So, maybe that's a feature I should eat. Let me just add that as a comment. Uh. Okay, so maybe maybe I don't need this. Um, how are you, by the way, Sin? Thank you for dropping in. I uh, hope you're doing well. I understand it's quite late for you, so... It's not like 1.30 for you? Jesus. Um, either way, thank you very much for making the time uh, to drop by. That's, that's really cool of you. Oops. Okay, so... Uh, now we're hitting floating point arrows. So... I'm gonna have to do that thing where everything else... Oh my god, no, I can't do that. So, uh, Outer Wilds does this thing where... Hello, uh, what sort of math are you doing? Um, the problem with uh, floating point errors... Pony hunting! Ay! Oh, shit happens. Um, no, it's all good. Um, honestly, you missed most of the... Uh, most of the boring things. Uh, and you're back in time for additional boring things. Um, so what Outer Wilds does in order to... Hey, and also Wolfmith, thanks for coming back. And also you can, like, ask questions whenever. It's fine. Um, anyway, what Outer Wilds does is it sets the uh, player's ship coordinates to 0, 0, 0 to the origin. And then calculates all of the other distances relative to that to account for, to, to minimize floating point errors. But if I'm doing a multiplayer um, dogfighting sim, then I can't do that. I can't get away with that. Uh, so what I'll have to do is I will have to randomly assign, well not randomly, I will have to assign origin to a player ship, to one of the player ships on server side uh, through some sort of dynamic calculation that clusters most of the ships closest to the origin. Which means I will have to solve the end body problem for, um, well no, not the solve the problem, but um, get relative magnitudes of every ship to every other ship, every frame, and then take them the lowest sum. Ah, uh, but I can just run that for every ship. So for every ship, I can iterate through every other ship and sum the vector distances and then take the smallest sum and assign origin to that ship. That's going to be incredibly buggy if I screw that up. That'll be, that'll be so funny to debug, my god. Okay, we're getting back closer to the origin. Uh, anyway, point is, I've also implemented rotation in various directions, and you have six degree of freedom movement, and when you actually do it, it looks like a dog's breakfast, because... Yeah. Um, well, let's see if break works. Break doesn't seem to be doing anything. Did I even map that correctly? Oh, I commented out all the code. <laughs> That's why break doesn't work. That would make a lot of sense. <laughs> Um, um, not real computer dogs. Uh, what sort of dogs? Wait, I, I completely wished. Um, did I say dogs? If I said dogs, I can't remember what I was talking about. Okay, is this... Okay, this this had type conversion issues. Dogfighting sim. Oh, no, dogfighting, like, um, uh, one word, dogfighting. Um, let me Wikipedia this real quick. I'll actually put this up. Um, dog fighting is a blood sport. Wait, no, that's not what I want. Um, dog fighting. That's dog fighting in space. There we go. No, no, that's <laughs> this is not the dog fighting that I wanted. The best flight sims. There we go. Flight sim dog fighting. Modern fighter dog fights. That's the sort of dog fighting I want. Um. Dogfight etymology. Wasps in a dogfight. Amazing. Who wrote this sentence? They should be fired. Um, dogfight. First per, per dogfights. Dogfights to engage in a battle between fighter planes. Yeah, it's um... Yeah, dogfighting between dogs is bad. But this is dogfighting between spaceships. Uh, I don't know where the term comes from, actually. I have no clue. Where is Dustin when you need him? He probably left because the math was boring. That's fine. I, I forgive him. No dogs are being harmed. No, no, only, only, 
basic polygons that look kind of like spaceships. Actually, they don't look like anything. Right now, it's just numbers. See, see the numbers down here. Um, these numbers uh, in my output field are literally all I've accomplished so far. Oh, what? Okay, right. Can't convert double to flirt. Um, I guess I could just. Because length is length anyway, I can just multiply them by hand and not call the method, and that should do the thing. What am I doing? My brackets are jank. Two. Oh, that's part of the method. Silly me. Okay, so that's what I want. Uh, then I should be able to just heal this. Uh, plain dogfights, not Michael Vick dogfights. Yes, correct. I don't know what Michael Vick is or who Michael Vick is, but yes. Okay, so instead of squaring this like a normal person, I'm just going to multiply it by itself, and then I hope I can read the code later. Uh, but yeah, in terms of node structure and like object structure, sin, I have to say that uh, at least on a on a high level, high th theoretical level. Oh, okay. Today I learned. Uh, there you go. Um, at least on a high level, the in a high level theoretical sense, uh, Godot seems more intuitive to me. Can't convert double to flirt. What is going on? I can't, because it won't give me mouse over feedback, I can't tell which value is actually what type. Uh, okay. Let's do this the slow way. A vector 3 length. A vector 3 length outputs a flirt. Multiplying a flirt by a flirt. Okay, velocity, what about the vector x? Is that a flirt or a double? That's also a flirt. Okay, but apparently f dividing a flirt by a flirt gives you a double. Um, G sharp convert double to flirt. Um, whatever. And either of these will do. Just hard cast this and hope it works. Uh, but yeah, fortunately, Godot also works with C Sharp, so uh, it's uh, it's not the default language, but it is an option, so that's been very easy for me. Okay, that just works, ostensibly. Uh, what happens if I do A? Oh no, this crashes the- yeah, that crashes the system. Bollocks. Okay, um... Uh, okay. So, I don't want this. I want, uh... Well, well, we'll mess around with this for a moment, but what I really need is I need this to be superseded by a um proceed with uh, targeting or final I don't know and meters uh so if velocity length is greater than like I don't know Let's try three. Then we do this. If it's lower than three. Then we just, yeah, do linear estimate. Uh, so then we just, we can steal this, but we don't have to condition it on velocity, we just have to do it on, this, and that should do the thing that we want. Uh, the values will probably be jank, and again I'll have to debug this visually, but at least in principle. Uh, do I have to flirt convert this, or does it work fine?
No, it crashes. Okay, I do need to put convert it. Apparently division generates doubles, today I learned. Can you tell I never did computer science at uni? Okay, this does the thing, and... Holding brake does nothing, but then if I go forwards... What is going on? We are vacillating. What is this doing? Okay, we don't like this. Oh, yeah, of course we're vacillating. really shrink that number. Oh, no, I think what I have to do is I have to make the number tiny and then otherwise I just set it to zero. No, I don't want delta v to be set to zero. I want delta v to be set to I just want to zero out the velocity at a certain point. Yeah, I'm 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 going to work out the camera eventually. Uh, but I'm hoping that uh, these work. Oh shit! I touched I touched something. Okay, I rotated my ship. That shouldn't be a problem, sir. So I'm holding brake and nothing bad is happening. Then we thrust. And our velocity is 2.8. Then if I hold brake... Okay, something garbage is happening. Oh... If velocity length... No, that's not what I want. Was Let's get rid of the 0.1. Um, and I do want that, so I want in velocity length times velocity length. Uh, sir, this is, this is squared. Actually, I can math power for that. Okay, so if we square the velocity, we want it to be larger than... Maybe that'll work, maybe that'll work. Let's try that. Uh, yeah, I've done something garbage and it's... Uh, okay, so ideally if this happens once, uh, if run once, this should kill velocity. Then it should just be setting delta zero. Wait, if this sets delta to zero, then I won't be able to move the ship. I've done something really stupid. Hooray! We like melted brains here. That's what that's what we're after. Okay, so I've done something and it's garbage. Okay, I have thrust. Heaving up, heaving down. I can heave down through zero and it works correctly. I mean, it's this is it's it's vector mathematics, right? So I am trying to control an object in three dimensional space, and I'm trying to make it do specific things. Okay, so what happens if I speed it way up and then hold brake? Okay, that was garbage. Um, but after it was garbage, it worked fine. goes down a little bit. Why does it jump back up to four? It's like it oscillates around a value. What 
Wait, what are what were you studying? Algebra. Why are you studying algebra? Okay, this is garbage, but it eventually works. Okay, what happens if I mess with literally all of the all of the variables? Okay, okay, our velocity is garbage and our uh position is moving wildly. Then we hold brake. It works. I don't think it works well, but it works. <laughs> oh, this is going to be absolute garbage to debug there. It's gonna very, it's gonna, it's gonna like slowly break because I know, I know the first part works fine, and then at the end it's just gonna go before stopping, and that's definitely not what I want. <laughs> that is true. I do have an amazing life. That is correct. Um. Okay, so, well, technically this works. Uh, do I knock off now, or do I try and implement a camera to see how badly I've fucked up? I did see the picture. It's very cute. Okay. I need a camera. I need a debug camera. I'm just gonna chuck it in here. Oh, I didn't. I keep forgetting about this. I really need a hotkey for, for the browser. Alright, so we're adding a debug camera to the combat scene. I like that one. I hope I hope she does. She deserves it. Oh, you can convert to single. Okay, I guess that makes sense. Oh, of course it turns into double because double needs twice the accuracy if you divide. Okay, okay, that's just basic math. Okay. We have a debug camera. Combat scene. Combat scene. This add child. What is this? Camera 3D, node 3D. I have no idea how cameras work in Godot. Maybe this works. Type one namespace debug camera could not be found. If valid. Okay. Um, I've set main to my. What if I just set this to my main? Uh, time for browser time again. The main game scene. Da 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 yay yeah, in there. Found collapse branch they've opened up. How do I set the main? The dirt sets scene as main. Changing which scene is the main scene. Project, project, everything's up. Run. There is no application. There is general. Run. No, combat is the main scene. Okay, one I see, why aren't I seeing anything then? Oh, because there's no camera. Wait. Okay, so there's a camera in here. Whatever. Oops. Oh, this is. Oops. Pointing out. Okay. Don't.
Okay, I see things. Uh... Okay. Okay, what if I go to the combat script and comment out the thing where we're adding the ship? I can still see it, okay. ship, but it's not the same ship that I'm seeing. Hmm. I should give up here is what I should do. Let's all just end up down this whole other rabbit hole. Yeah, 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 I'm gonna, I'm gonna end it here. I'm gonna end it up here. Um, I will continue poking at this project intermittently off stream in my Discord, and uh, the next dev stream is four weeks from now on Sunday. The I don't know what day it is today. What day is it today? Yeah, next stream is on Sunday, the October the fifteenth, uh, and hopefully that will just be. Um, as I do these snip these streams once every four weeks, they will be kind of snippets of my progress in the background rather than just uh, well, they'll all be tedious documentation searching, but hopefully the game you'll see in the background of them will will uh, change over time or like increment, right? Uh, anyway, I will call it here. Thank you for the people who had uh, the requisite patience for uh, to watch me do in documentation trolling to a pretty ridiculous extent actually. Um, water time. Hey, Hernheim, thanks, and thanks for popping in. We're actually just folding off. I've, um, three hours of documentation trolling is enough for me for now. And hey, happy birthday soon, uh, Wolfmith. Um, your birthday stream... Uh, I can do this. Uh, what is my Twitch schedule? There is a stream on the day of your birthday. Uh, but I don't know that it'll actually be a stream that'll be in interesting to you. Uh, October. It's Pikmin 3 Part 3! Yay! Maybe, look, maybe it'll be great. Who, who knows? We'll see. But yes, that's the October 14th stream. Uh, but yeah. I'm going to call it here. Thank you again. You've been doing mass account recovery. Um, did you change your email or something? What have you done? Are you okay? Is everything okay? Um, also, I haven't had time to put memes in. Uh, sorry, I'll think of better memes next time. Yay, okay, you can have attention. Attention is pretty much free, so uh, I am happy to, to donate it to the cause. Nearly everything is fixed except for the TAFE portal. What what happened? What happened, Hornheim? Jesus Christ. Did you get hacked or something? I'm so sorry. Do the whole thing in the Polish accent? No, that, that'll just be exhausting to me. Um, I will give you like a free Polish accent redeem or two if you want. All five of your emails got hacked. How? That's gotta be like someone you know. 100% that's gotta be someone you know. Yeah. I'm sorry you had to go through that. It sounds like a, a slog, honestly. It sounds like crap. Um, anyway, I don't have a lot to add other than... Uh, well, I've got the ship moving in concept. My next problem is actually just... Uh, instantiating a ship and then moving the same ship I instantiate, which apparently is non-trivial. 
Uh, we've got the camera working. Um, I do need a skybox, actually, relatively urgently. Uh, and I also need a reference object. Uh, non-physics reference objects that I can use to judge motion. Uh, and then when I do that, uh, I'll be able to stick a camera on the ship directly and get a better idea. It was from Liechtenstein. Okay, yeah, um, an X sounds about right. Jesus Christ. Um, but then, like, what motivates them to suddenly do that out of nowhere? I don't know. Well, I wish you the best. As you can tell, I'm about ready for bed. It is it is the ripe um, late hour of 9am and I should probably crash. Uh, but I am going to call it here. Uh, thank you all again. Yeah, okay, well, that, that pretty much identifies that person as the most likely culprit, right? Um, anyways, yes, um, I am going to head off for now. I will be back. I don't know when I'll be back. I have a stream scheduled for um, uh, for Tuesday, a Beat Saber stream scheduled for Tuesday. I don't know if I'll be able to make that. It's conditional on my being able to clean my study and get VR working in the next two days. If I don't do Beat Saber today, oh, what the hell? No, that's bonkers, dude. How do you how do you come up? Every time you pop into my stream, you have an interesting problem. I wish you a calm and placid life where nothing happens for like a couple of weeks. Cause man, you deserve it. You need a break. Uh, but yes, uh, Beat Saber Tuesday. If I don't get everything working by Tuesday, Beat Saber next Tuesday, and so on and so on until I get everything functioning. Um, next week we have Chess on Saturday and Outer Wilds on Sunday. Yes, all the best everyone. Thank you very much for popping in, and I will see you next time. Mm -hmm.